Hi, I'm Paige Winters, and I'm here with Aubrey Hatner and Madeline Diefendorfer. Well, and welcome back to our Women's March Madness predictions. Today, we will be doing a recap of each game from the tournament, and at the end, we will show who had the most accurate bracket. We're going to start with the first four games of the tournament. The first game was in the Albany One region, and it was Sacred Heart versus Presbyterian. The score was 49-42 Presbyterian. I actually had Holy, I mean Sacred, yeah Sacred Heart winning this game. I just thought they were a better team. I mean their record was 24-9 and Presbyterian was 20-14, so I just thought they'd pull it out. Yeah, I also had Sacred Heart for this one. I thought that they were gonna win, but it turns out that Presbyterian won instead. So yeah, um, I had Sacred Heart here too, which obviously was wrong. But I honestly, like Maddie said, I thought that they would win since they only lost nine games. Presbyterian lost 14. The next game is Holy Cross versus UT Martin, and the score was 72-45 Holy Cross. That is a big difference in scores, especially for a first four game. Usually these teams aren't great. I mean, they barely made it into the games anyway, so I'm just surprised Holy Cross beat them by that much. I had Holy Cross this game, and I'm glad they won because I, I wasn't really sure on which um, which team to pick here, so I'm kind of happy that Holy Cross won. Uh, yeah, I had Holy Cross too, and I didn't thought it was a no-brainer because UT Martin was 16-16, so they were only 500 on the season, and if you're making March Madness with that record, you're not going to go very far. And the third game was Auburn versus Arizona, and Arizona won 69-59. I thought this game, it was a pretty good game. I mean, I like both of these teams. I've heard good things about them. I had uh, Arizona winning this game, which, of course, they ended up doing. So I think they played a good game. Yeah, I also had Arizona winning. It was a pretty good game. It was a pretty good score, but um, I'm glad Arizona won. Um, I had Arizona. I just really thought that freshman Jada Williams was going to really help lead them with the win, and she obviously did. Um, the last game in the first four was Vanderbilt versus Columbia, and Vanderbilt won 72-68. I had Columbia actually winning this game. There was a girl from uh, Bucknell who ended up transferring over there, and I just, I was trying to, you know, stay uh, close to home and hoping they were going to win, but they didn't, but it's fine. I also had Columbia for this game. I felt like it was going to be a good game, but um, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt ended up winning, so... I actually had Vanderbilt, so um, I knew it was going to be a good game because Columbia has one of the best shooters in the league, and Abby Shu, I think that's her name, and Cecilia Collins is the one who Maddie mentioned about being from Bucknell. She's really good in the post, too, so I just thought, but they're really good, but I thought Vanderbilt had more because they had a close game with, I think, it was either South Carolina or LSU in the regular season. We're now moving on to the Albany One region. And the first game was South Carolina versus Presbyterian. I actually had Sacred Heart being in this game, but they ended up losing. But I thought South Carolina played a phenomenal game. I mean, the score was 91-39. That's, I mean, if I were to be a March Madness team in this bracket, I would feel very embarrassed after that. Well, first off, I had South Carolina beating Sacred Heart, but Sacred Heart ended up losing. But I feel like anyway, um, either way it went, I feel like South Carolina would have won anyway just because they're a really dominant team. So. Yeah, I also had thought that the game was going to be South Carolina versus Sacred Heart, but I still picked South Carolina because no one's going to beat an undefeated team like South Carolina this early in the tournament. Next game was North Carolina versus Michigan State. I had Michigan State winning this game. I just thought they'd be able to pull up the offset, the <laughs> upset. Um, the score was actually 59-56 North Carolina, so that's not that bad of a loss. I would say, I mean, they're both pretty equal teams. I had North Carolina. I wasn't really sure who to pick for this game, but I ended up picking North Carolina. I feel like they've been pretty good this season. Um, I picked Michigan State because I thought that they played really well in the regular season, even being in the Big Ten with some of the toughest opponents in the country. They, went, they only lost eight games, which I thought was really good. And North Carolina lost 12 games on the season, so I thought that Michigan State was going to have an easy win, but clearly not. Next game was Oklahoma versus FGCU. The score was 73-70 Oklahoma. Paige, what did you think about this game? Um, I think that this game was way closer than it should have been. I mean, FGCU is a really good team. I think I watched a documentary about them a couple nights ago, and they've been really good. I think one of their best players is out. So, I mean, this is really good for them to have such a close game with a five seed in the tournament. 
but Oklahoma pulled through. I also had Oklahoma. I just feel like um, I just had a feeling that they were gonna win. So and it was a pretty good game. I had Oklahoma too. I just I thought it would be a bigger point differential, but they still ended up pulling it out. Next game is Indiana versus Fairfield. I had Indiana winning this game. The score was 89-56 Indiana. I thought this was a good game for Indiana. I mean, they proved that they can beat um, a team that's not very good, and they beat them by a big margin. I also had Indiana. I feel like yeah, they did definitely win by a lot, but I feel like I kind of saw it coming. They're a pretty good team. Yeah, I thought this game was going to be a lot closer than it was. I had Indiana still, but Fairfield, they had too much hype because they got in the top 25, and a lot of people thought they were really good because they only lost one game, but they have had no competition. And I think the game was really close going into halftime, but Indiana went on a huge run and pulled it through. Next game was Nebraska versus Texas A&M. The score was 61-59 Nebraska. I actually had Texas A&M pulling off the upset, but... I mean, of course, it didn't happen, but I mean, they were only down, what, two points? So, I yeah. mean, that's a phenomenal game for them, and I think, I mean, it still sucks that they lost, but I see potential for them. I had no breath for this game, and this game was really close, and it was a really good game, but um, I had a feeling Nebraska would win, and they obviously did, so... I also had Nebraska for this game. I originally, before the game, I thought that Jazz Shelley, Alexis Markowski, and Natalie Potts were going to be way too much for Texas A&M to handle, but it wasn't. They had a bad game. I think their leading scorer only had like 16 points, but they were lucky that they pulled through with the win. Next game was Oregon State versus Eastern Washington. The score was 73-51 Oregon State. Aubrey, what do you think about this game? I feel like this was a pretty good game, but I feel like Oregon State is just too good. They're a really good team, pretty dominant. So I feel like they wouldn't have been beaten this early on. Um, I had Oregon State too. I thought that Regan Beers was going to be really good, and she proved that. And they did really well in the regular season. I think they upset some top teams during the season, I think. But I don't even know who Eastern Washington is, so, I mean, it was a no-brainer for me to pick Oregon State. Yeah, I know that Oregon State pulled off at least two big upsets, so, I mean, when they were playing a 14 seed Eastern Washington, I knew they had no problem uh, winning this game. Next game was Ole Miss versus Marquette, and the score was 67-55 Ole Miss. I actually had Marquette pulling off this upset. I just thought they would be more dominant than uh, Ole Miss. I just because they've been in the top 25 a lot this season, I just thought they had great potential. I had Ole Miss for this winning this game. I mean, they obviously did, but I feel like this would have been a close game because they both won 23 and lost 8, so I feel like this was um, a pretty good game. Um, I picked Ole Miss for this game. I thought that Ole Miss played really well in the regular season. I think they're in the SEC, aren't they? If yeah, they are. Um, they're... they Only losing 8 games in that good of a conference is really good, and Marquette doesn't really have too much competition in the Big East. I think that's what they're in. The only big competition they had was probably Creighton and UConn. The last game in the first round of the Albany One region was Notre Dame versus Kent State. I had Notre Dame winning this game. They, of course, won the game 81-67. I knew they had no problem. Hannah Hudalgo, is that how you yeah. say it? Yeah. I, I just knew she'd be too dominant. She's even just a freshman, so I see great potential for them in the future. Yeah, I also had Notre Dame. I feel like they would not have been beaten this early on. They're just too dominant and too good of a team. Yeah, I had Notre Dame. Um, the big three of Maddie Westfeld, Sanaya Citron, and Hannah Hidalgo is just too tough to beat, especially when you're a 15 seed in the first round of the tournament. The next set of games that we will be covering is the first round in the Albany 2 region. The first game was one seed in Iowa versus Holy Cross. Um, Iowa won 91-65, and I had Iowa winning this game because they have Caitlin Clark, Kate Martin, Hannah Stalky, and a lot of the other people that helped them a lot. And they started out rough in the first half, but then they picked it up in the second half, so. I also had Iowa in this game, and they obviously won by quite a bit, which I kind of suspected, because like Paige said, they have Caitlin Clark, Kate, Kate Martin, and a bunch of other good players, so I just kind of suspected that they'd win. I had Iowa winning this game as well. I just knew they would be uh, super dominant in this tournament. It's Caitlin Clark's last year. They have to try their hardest to get her a championship. The next game is West Virginia versus Princeton, and I had West Virginia. I thought that West Virginia played really well throughout the regular season. I think they were ranked at one point. I don't know when it was. I think it might have been mid-season, 
but they had really good defense in this game, and I think they forced a lot of Princeton turnovers, which helped them win. I actually had Princeton winning this game, which they didn't, but I feel I felt like they would have could have gotten me upset, but they didn't. I had West Virginia winning this game. I knew they'd be able to pull it off. I mean, they were in the top 25, like many other teams in this tournament, and I just I knew that even though it was two close seeded teams, I knew they'd be able to do it. The next game is Colorado versus Drake. The score was 86 to 72 Colorado, and that's who I had picked to win the game because they have Jalen Sherrod and they have a lot of help behind her, and I didn't think that they were going to lose this early in the tournament. I also picked Colorado for this, and I feel like Colorado is a pretty, pretty good team, and I feel like they um, were going to win anyway, so. I had Colorado winning this game too. I just thought they would be able to do it. I mean, and also, like, just shout out, I love the black jerseys. <laughs> the next game was Kansas State versus Portland, and the score was 78-65 Kansas State. I picked Kansas State for this game. I knew it was going to be a close game because I think Portland beat Gonzaga in the Western Conference tournament in the, like, for the championship, I think. So, and Gonzaga's a four seed, so I thought maybe Portland could have had a big, you know, run in the tournament, but Kansas State beat them. I had Kansas State win this game, too. I feel like Kansas State's been pretty good this season, and I feel like they're a pretty good team. I had Kansas State winning as well. I just, they ended up beating Iowa at the beginning of the year, and I just, I, I mean, if you can beat Iowa even just once, you can beat a 13 seed. You can beat almost anyone yeah. except for South Carolina. The next game was Louisville versus Middle Tennessee, and Middle Tennessee pulled off a big upset here, and they won 71-69. That's not good for me because I picked Louisville because I thought that they were really good. Even though they lost Haley Van Luke this season, they had a lot of balance on their team. But it came down to a last shot, and Louis someone on Louisville shot like a three-quarter shot, and it rimmed out, and I thought it was going to go in, but it didn't. Yeah, I also picked Louisville in this game, but... Uh, Middle Tennessee um, pulled up a big ups upset, which I just wasn't expecting at all. I feel like Louisville, I just thought Louisville was going to pull it off, but instead, Middle Tennessee won. This was a phenomenal game for Middle Tennessee. I'm, I've i never heard of them until this tournament, and I'm just so surprised that they would pull that off. I was I had Louisville, too, because I was really hoping for Haley Van Lith to go against her old team, but it ended up not happening. All right, the next game is LSU versus Rice, and LSU won 70-60. to Maddie, what did you think about this game? I had LSU winning this game. I I mean, LSU, of course, I don't think they played their best game. They only beat Rice by 10, and they have Andrew Rees, Fly J. Johnson. They, ha like, they have a stacked team, and I'm just surprised it was that close. Yeah, I also had LSU in this game. And while they still won, I feel like they could have done a lot better just because of all the good players that they have on their team. I also picked LSU. I thought this was going to be a blowout, but, I mean, a win is a win, and you can't really argue about it. The next game was Creighton versus UNLV. I picked UNLV for this game because I thought that they played really good in the regular season. They only lost two games, but Creighton pulled through and won 87-73. to Yeah, I also had Creighton for this one. Um, I honestly wasn't sure, really sure who to pick for this game at first, but... I'm glad I picked Creighton because they ended up winning. It was a pretty good game. I had UNLV pulling off the upset. I just thought they'd be able to pull it off. I don't. I've never heard anything about them, but it just. It, I like. I like their school. I like their team. So I just thought they'd be able to do it. The last game in the Albany Two first round is UCLA versus California Baptist. UCLA won 84 to 55. I picked UCLA for this game because they have Kiki Rice, Lauren Betts, Charisma Osborne, and a lot of other people that help them win their wins. And this was a pretty good score range. I didn't think it was going to be like a blowout blowout, like South Carolina type, but I didn't think it was going to be a close game at all. Yeah, I also had UCL winning this game, and they obviously did by quite a bit, which I suspected because um, they've been doing really good this season. I also had UCLA. I just I knew they'd be too dominant. They were dominant this whole entire regular season. The next group of games in the first round was in the Portland Three region. The first game was USC versus Texas A&M Corpus Christi. I picked USC for this game, which was right because they won 87-55. Um, this wasn't like a big blowout for them, but I mean they still played really well. 
pass at USC from this one. I mean, they obviously won by quite a bit, but I feel like you can't beat USC right off the bat. They're a good team, and they're one seed, so. I had USC, too. I just knew freshman uh, Gigi Watkins would be able to pull off the win. She's a phenomenal freshman, and I, I believe she has the most points of a freshman yeah. ever. So, I mean, there's no way you're taking her down in the first round. The next game was Kansas versus Michigan. Um, Kansas won 81-72 to 72 in overtime. I picked Michigan for this game because they played really well throughout the regular season. Didn't they upset? Who did they upset in the Big Ten tournament? Was it Maryland or? No, it wasn't Maryland. It was Ohio State or Indiana. I think it would have been Indiana. Yeah, they upset Indiana or Ohio State. Not sure which <laughs> one. But I thought that they really proved that they could play with big teams, but Kansas just shut them up. Yeah, I also had picked Michigan for this. I mean, I thought that Michigan could have pulled off this win, but Kansas won. I just had to be a little different, and I picked Kansas. The next game was Baylor versus Vanderbilt, and Baylor won 80-63. to I picked Baylor for this game. They've been playing really well this season. They ha I don't know what her name is, but there's the one girl that's been playing like really good basketball this season. Well, I originally had Baylor versus Columbia, but Vanderbilt Bale ended up winning that one. So, But I had Baylor winning anyway, and they won by a pretty decent amount. So. I had Columbia in that game too, just like Aubrey, but I mean, of course it didn't happen. But then for that game, I had Baylor winning, just because I knew they were dominant. They had a great, uh, pre, uh, not preseason, uh, regular season. season. So I, they can't get knocked out at the beginning. The next game was Virginia Tech versus Marshall, and Virginia Tech won 92 to 49. I expected to see a lot more out of Georgia Amor this game since they lost Elizabeth Kitley due to a torn ACL. But she got into early foul trouble. I think she only played like 20 minutes that game. But that game was huge for Virginia Tech because they proved that they could play without Georgia Amor. And Matilda Eck stepped up for um, Elizabeth Kitley and had like a 20-point game, I think. Yeah, I also had Virginia Tech. I mean, obviously they won by a pretty big range. And I feel like they just wouldn't have been able to be beaten this early on. I had Virginia Tech as well. I mean, I just feel so bad about Elizabeth Kitley getting injured. I mean, she was most likely going to be getting drafted high, and I just thought, I mean, if they would have had her, they probably would have had 100 points this game. But, I mean, they still pulled it out without her, so I'm proud of them. The next game was Syracuse versus Arizona, and I actually picked Arizona for this game, but Syracuse pulled through and won 74-69. Deisha Fair had a really big game for Syracuse. I think she's the third all-time leading scorer now. And in like there was not much time left on the clock in the fourth quarter. She had two clutch buckets from like about 15 feet out that put them that secured the win for them. I had Syracuse winning this game. I was close between picking Arizona, but I picked Syracuse because I feel like they could have just definitely pulled the win off, and they did. I had Arizona pulling off the upset. I mean, it's gotten crazy for an 11-6 upset. Well, I just. I, I've seen things about Arizona. I've seen them being a phenomenal team, but of course, I mean, like the games show, they didn't win. The next game was UConn versus Jackson State, and UConn won 86 to 64. I would have liked to seen a better um, opening game in the tournament from UConn, considering they played a 14 seed. But I still think that this built some good momentum for them, considering they only have eight players and Paige Beckers. I had think had like 28 points and she played really well. Yeah, I had UConn in this game. I kind of figured they would. They have Paige Beckers, Aaliyah Edwards, and Nika Mule, and a bunch of other good players. So I just kind of figured that they would win. I had UConn as well. I mean, I was a little scared with them only bringing eight players into the tournament. I wasn't sure how long that was going to last them just because of injuries, sickness, foul trouble, things like that. I mean, they clearly pulled it off, and they pulled it off by 22 points, and which I think that's a good point margin for their first game. The next game was Duke versus Richmond. I had Duke winning this game, which they did, 72-61. to 61. Um, I haven't really heard much about Richmond um, throughout any of the season, and I knew Duke was a pretty good team with Regan Richardson, and she had a big game for them in this game. I also had Duke winning this game. I feel like they definitely... Um, would have pulled it off, and they did, and I kind of figured, so. I had Duke as well. For some reason, when I was first making my bracket, I was going to put Richmond, 
But then I decided to change it last minute just because I thought that Duke would be able to pull it off. I mean, both Duke's women's and men's had a great tournament this year, and I'm I'm just glad they were able to do it. The last game in the Portland 3 region of the first round is Ohio State versus Maine. I picked Ohio State for this game, which they won 80-57. to I think J.C. Sheldon had like 19 points for them, and Cody McMahon was really big for them in this game too. I also had Ohio State winning, and I mean, they won by quite a few points. I mean, they're ranked second, and I feel like you just can't beat Ohio State this early on. I had Ohio State as well. I mean, the same thing like um, Kansas State, they beat Iowa as well halfway through their season, so I knew they would be able to pull out against 15 seed Maine. The final games in the first round were in the Portland 4 region. The first game is Texas versus Drexel, and Texas won 82-42. Aubrey, what do you think about this game? I feel like this would have happened anyway. I mean, Texas is a really good team. And I mean, they obviously won by quite a bit, so. Yeah, um, I had Texas to win this game in my bracket, and I think that this was a no-brainer because Texas won by 40 points. It was like a South Carolina-type blowout. And Texas is just too strong to beat in the first round of the tournament, especially when you're 16 seed. And Texas has like Shaylee Gonzalez and Madison Booker. Yeah, I had Texas, of course, winning this game, too. They're too dominant to lose in the first round. Next game was Alabama versus Florida State, and the score was 82-74 Alabama. I had Alabama actually winning this game. I I just, I don't really know why. I just felt like it. I know their men's team is pretty good, so I was just thinking maybe it translated into the women's game. Yeah, I also had Alabama winning this game. I was, I didn't really know who to pick first. I only picked Florida, but... I'm glad I went with Alabama. I mean, it was a pretty good game. I also picked Alabama, and I feel like Alabama played really well this season. One of, in one of their games when they played South Carolina, they had a close game with South Carolina, or with them at halftime, and then they kind of let South Carolina pull away. But I think that it was great for them to stay that close with South Carolina for a full half. Next game was Utah versus South Dakota State, and Utah won 68-54. I had... Utah winning this game too. I just, they're a five seed, they're playing a 12 seed. I mean, their record was only 22 and 10, but I just think when you're playing a 12 seed, it's kind of impossible to lose if you're like probably around a six or higher seed. I also had Utah winning this game. I mean, I don't really know that much about South Dakota, but since they're 12 seed, I kind of figured that Utah would win. Um, I had Utah for this game, too. Um, Alyssa Pillai is just a great player, and she helps lead Utah. Alyssa Pillai is going to the uh, – she's projected to go high in the draft, right? Yeah, first Yeah, round. so that makes sense. Next game was Gonzaga versus UC Irvine. I had Gonzaga win, uh, winning this game, and they ended up winning 75-56. That's a good score for Gonzaga. I mean, they're a pretty good team. I haven't heard much about them, but – yeah, I had Gonzaga winning this game. I mean, they're a pretty good team. They're pretty dominant, and I feel like they wouldn't have lost this early on. Um, I also had uh, Gonzaga winning, too. They played really well this season. They only lost three games, and I don't – I mean, I know who UC Irvine is, but I haven't heard anything about them this season, and I've heard some good stuff about Gonzaga. Next game was Tennessee versus Green Bay. Tennessee won 92-63. Paige, what do you think about this game? Um, I think this was a really good first game, round game for Tennessee to build a lot of momentum going into their next round against probably they play NC State, but who would pick Chattanooga for Tennessee? And I feel like, yeah. I had Tennessee winning this game. I feel like um, I, I kind of suspected it, and they won by a really big amount, so... I had Tennessee winning this game also. I mean, they played, what, it was South Carolina at the beginning of, well, not the beginning, their end of the season, and they almost beat them, but they ended up losing by a, a buzzer beater. So, I mean, that was wide open, which should have never happened, yeah. because why would you let anyone in the college basketball game shoot a wide open three-pointer, even if they're six foot seven? Yeah. Um, I mean, Tennessee did play a good game, and I, I, I just knew they would be able to win the first round. Next game was NC State versus Chattanooga. I had NC State winning this game, and they won 64-45. I knew NC State was going to win this game. I mean, they were ranked, I believe, first in the top 25, I think, at one point. Oh, wait, no, they weren't. No, South Carolina. Oh, yeah, it was, I th it was either second or third. 
I think it was second. No, one it point. Was second, I think. And then they they were sitting around the two two to like five range most of the season. So I mean they weren't gonna lose to a fourteen seed. Yeah, I had NC State winning this game too. I mean, it's pretty obvious. It, obvious they've been ranked really high the whole season. They're a really good team. I also had NC State. They played a really great season this year, and they beat UConn earlier, like one of the first games of the season. And I think that just set them on fire, and they haven't stopped. Next game was Iowa State versus Maryland, and Iowa State won ninety-three to eighty-six. Paige, what do you think about this game? Well, I thought that Maryland was going to pull off the upset because they have a really balanced team. They have Cheyenne Sellers, Faith Masonis, and a lot of Renee Alexander. And they just have, they're really dominant on the offensive end and defensive end. But Audie Crooks dropped 40 points for Iowa State. So there's not really much you can do there. And if, she w- if it wasn't for Audie Crooks, then Maryland probably would have won. Yeah, I had Iowa winning this game. I mean, it was a, I was in a close toss-up between Iowa State and Maryland, but um, I'm glad that Iowa State won. And they won by um, just a close amount. It was a really good game. I had Maryland pulling off the uh, upset. I thought they were going to be able to do it. They have a bunch of debt in their bench. But, I mean, when one of your players drops 40 points, I mean, it's pretty obvious that you have a high chance of winning. Last game in Portland 4 was Stanford versus Norfolk State, State, and Stanford won 79-50. I, of course, had Stanford winning this game. Cameron Brink and what? What's her name? Kiki Ariasa. Yeah. Awesome. They're just like a, they're a great duo, and I saw no way they would be losing the first round. Yeah, I also had um, Stanford winning this game. I mean, they're a really good team. They're really dominant, and they won by a pretty big amount. I also chose Stanford. I just thought that no one could beat the duo of Cameron Brink and Kiki Arihoffen on offensive boards, and offensive boards helps you win games. We're now going to move on to the second round of the March Madness tournament. We're in the Albany One region. The first game that I had was South Carolina versus Michigan State. It ended up actually being South Carolina versus North Carolina. And South Carolina won 88-41. I, of course, had South Carolina winning this game. I mean, they're such a dominant team. They beat North Carolina by 40 points. That's crazy. Yeah, I had um, South Carolina and North Carolina, and I mean, that's who uh, played against each other, and I had South Carolina winning this. And I mean, they obviously won by a pretty big amount, which I kind of figured because they're a really good team. Well, I thought that the matchup was going to be South Carolina versus Michigan State, but I was wrong. But I still picked South Carolina to win because they're too dominant. They have Camila Cardoso. Um, and I think I saw something that South Carolina could have went scoreless in the second half and still won. Next game I had was Oklahoma versus Indiana, and that was who was actually in the game. And Indiana ended up winning 75-68. I also had Indiana winning. I just... Even, I mean, Indiana is one seed higher. I I knew it was probably going to be a close game, but I just thought the four seed would be the five seed. Yeah, I also had Oklahoma and Indiana. I mean, that's who actually played each other. And I had Oklahoma winning this game. I just thought that they'd be able to pull it off, but it turns out that they did that. Yeah, I had the same as Aubrey. I had Oklahoma beating Indiana, which... I thought that Indiana would lose here because they don't have a lot of depth, and I think you, not UConn, Oklahoma does, and Mackenzie Holmes, I mean, she's had some good games, but like I feel like it's just like depends on the day, so I didn't know if she, it would depend on whether she would perform or not, and I didn't think she would perform, so I picked Oklahoma, which was obviously wrong. Next game was Nebraska versus Oregon State, and Oregon State won 61-51. Paige, what did you think? Well... I had Nebraska beating Oregon State um, because I thought that Josh Shelley was going to have a big game like she did against Iowa earlier in the season. But um, Nebraska kind of didn't play to their true level in either of their games in the tournament, and Oregon State played really good basketball, and that just pushed them to the win. Yeah, I had Nebraska and Oregon State, and I had Oregon State winning. It was a pretty good game. I feel like Oregon State played really good. I actually had Texas A&M versus Oregon State. Texas A&M, of course, wasn't in this game, but I did end up picking Oregon State right as winning that game. I just they upset like at least two big teams this year, 
and I just I just had a feeling that they were gonna end up pulling out. Next, the last game in the Albany One region was Old Miss versus Notre Dame. Notre Dame won seventy one fifty six. I had actually Marquette versus Notre Dame. I did have Notre Dame winning this game. It's just they have incredible like young talent on their team, and I even though they're young, but I just feel like there's phenomenal leaders already. I had Ole Miss versus Notre Dame, and I had Notre Dame winning. I just feel like Notre Dame's a really good team. I feel like they wouldn't have lost to Ole Miss. So I also had Notre Dame beating Ole Miss. Um, I thought that Hannah Hidalgo played really well this game, as, as well as Sonia Zetron and Maddie Westfeld. Now we're moving on to the second round games in the Albany 2 region. The first game was Iowa versus West Virginia, and Iowa won 64-54. I had Iowa winning this game. I thought that they would just be too dominant. I mean, they struggled, strung, struggled really bad early in the game, but then they started picking it up. But West Virginia had really good defense this game, and they got into foul trouble, which is what helped Iowa pull away late in the game. I actually had Iowa versus Princeton, but I ended up picking Iowa winning anyway. They're just a really good team. I feel like they're really dominant. I also had I well I had Iowa versus West Virginia. I of course had Iowa winning this game. I was scared like halfway through the game. I mean I know it's Iowa and they can pull it out, but it was just it was close the whole entire game and West Virginia was putting up a fight, but I was able to uh, pull it out. And West Virginia, indeed, did not send Caitlin Clark packing home. They sent her packing to the Sweet 16. The next game is Colorado versus Kansas State, and Colorado won 63-50. I picked Colorado for this game because I thought that Jalen Sherrod um, led them really well throughout the season, and I thought that that was going to continue throughout the tournament, and it did. Um, this was a close game most of the game, and then Colorado pulled away pretty good at the end. Yeah, I had Colorado on Kansas State. I had Colorado winning this game. They're, they're a pretty good team. I feel like they've been pretty good this season. I had Kansas State winning this game. I just thought because they beat Iowa, like I said uh, before in their season, I just thought maybe they'd be able to beat Colorado. They're both phenomenal teams, and I, it was really a toss-up on who I thought was going to win. The next game was Middle Tennessee versus LSU, and LSU won 83-56. Um, the matchup that I thought was going to happen was Haley Van Lith playing her old team in LSU versus Louisville, but that didn't happen with the Middle Tennessee upset. Um, LSU struggled pretty in the first quarter of this game, but then they pulled things together and they pulled away. Yeah, I also had Louisville versus LSU, but I mean, I had LSU winning, winning anyway. They were a good team. I won, they won by quite a bit. So. I had Louisville and LSU in this game too, and then I of course had LSU winning. It it was close at the be beginning of the game, and I really thought Middle Tennessee was going to be able to pull off another upset. They're a great team, and even for being like a small school that I had never heard of before this tournament, they did phenomenal this tournament. The last game in the second round of the Albany Two region was Creighton versus UCLA. Um, my original matchup here was UNLV versus UCLA. But I still chose UCLA to win, which they did 67 to 63. This was a little bit too close of a game, I think, for UCLA this early in the tournament. Um, their starters just didn't really perform to the best of their ability. I had Creighton and UCLA playing each other, and I had UCLA winning. But I feel like the game was just really close for UCLA being as high ranked as they are, and Creighton being ranked seven, but they still won. I had the same matchup as Paige, UNLV versus UCLA. I, of course, had UCL, UCLA winning this game. It was closer than, it, than I expected, even no matter what, if it was Creighton or UNLV. They're both 7 and 10 seeds. I just didn't think that UCLA would only win by four. The next group of games in the second round is in the Portland 3 region. The first game was USC versus Kansas, and USC won 73-55. I picked USC to win this game because I thought that Juju Watkins and Mackenzie Forbes have played really well for them all season long, and Mackenzie Forbes really started stepping up her performance in the Pac-12 tournament, and then that translated into this tournament. 
my original pick was USC versus Michigan, but I had USC winning anyway. They're a really good team. I feel like they would have just pulled off the win. I ended up picking this matchup right. I had USC versus Kansas. I, of course, had USC winning this game. They're such a dominant team, and Juju Watkins can lead them through almost any game. The next game was Baylor versus Virginia Tech, and Baylor won 75-72. to um, I had the matchup right, but I picked Virginia Tech to win. I thought that I was going to see a lot more out of Georgia Amor and Kayla King, considering that Elizabeth Kitley was out, but Clara Strack stepped up for her this game, but they just fell short. I had Baylor and Virginia Tech playing each other also, but I also had Virginia Tech winning. I just thought that um, they could pull this one off, and it was a pretty close game. I mean, they could have, but Baylor won. I had the right matchup for this game, but I just had Virginia Tech winning the game. I thought they'd be able to pull it out even without Elizabeth Kitley. Just uh, Georgia Moore is like, she's... She's been compared to Caitlin Clark. She just, I don't think she's as good, but she she's she's close. But I just wasn't expecting Baylor to end up beating them. The next game was Syracuse versus UConn, and UConn won 72-64. to My matchup that I thought was going to happen for this game was Arizona versus UConn, but Syracuse beat Arizona in the earlier round. Um, this game was really close, and... I was really stressed out in the fourth quarter watching this because D.A. Fair was hitting some tough buckets at the end, but Paige Beckers and UConn pulled away at the end. I had Syracuse and UConn playing each other, but I had and I had UConn winning. It was a it was a good game. I mean, it was it was pretty close, it, but I feel like UConn just would have definitely pulled it out anyway. They're a really good team. I had UConn in this matchup too, but I just had Arizona playing them. I had. UConn winning this game, I just knew Paige Beckers and Aaliyah Edwards would be able to pull it out, and Nika Mool's defense is just too good. The last game of the second round in the Portland 3 region was Duke versus Ohio State, and Duke won 75-63. to um, These are the two teams that I had playing in the game, but I picked Ohio State to win. I thought that Cody McMahon was going to be huge on the inside for Ohio State, but Duke played really well, and they defended her really well and held her to pretty low points, and Regan Richardson had a really good game for them this game. This was the biggest upset outside of the Middle Tennessee upset of the tournament, probably. I had Duke also playing Ohio State, but I had Ohio State winning. I thought that Ohio State would have definitely won, but um, Duke had a really good game. I had the same matchup as Paige and Aubrey, and I had Ohio State winning. I was not expecting Duke to upset them. I mean, I've heard of Duke. They've been a good team here and there, especially on the men's side. But, I mean, I'm pr- I'm proud of them for ended up being Ohio State, who beat Iowa. The Portland 4 region contains the last games of the second round of the tournament. The first game was Texas versus Alabama, and Texas won 65-54. I had Alabama and Texas both in this game. I, of course, had Texas winning. I expected Alabama to put up a good fight even though they're an eight seed they're just uh, in any sport Alabama is pretty good but Texas had them this year yeah I also had Texas um and Alabama I and I had Texas winning I mean it was a pretty pretty good game for both of them but I just felt like Texas would have pulled up off the win I had Texas beating Alabama this game and I thought that Texas would have won by a little bit more than, what, 11 points, considering how strong of a team they are. But they did also lose Rory Harmon to injury earlier in the season, so, I mean, that's played a bigger role in games like this where it comes down to the wire and not being as big of a gap as it should be. Next game was Utah versus Gonzaga, and Gonzaga won 77-66. I actually had Utah winning this game. I just thought Alyssa Pillai would be able to uh, take her team to the win. Even though Gonzaga is a four seed and Utah is a five seed, I just thought they had it in the bag. I had Utah and Gonzaga, but I had Gonzaga winning this game. I mean, I wasn't really sure who to pick. I almost picked Utah, but I'm glad that um, Gonzaga ended up winning. Um, I had Utah over Gonzaga this game. I really thought that Alyssa Pillai would really lead them to a big win against Gonzaga here but Gonzaga just played really good all game. The next game was Tennessee versus NC State, 
and NC State won 79-72. I had NC State winning this game. I knew they'd make a, a deep run into the tournament. They're a phenomenal team, and I'm, I mean, I'm just glad they made it here. Yeah, I had Tennessee versus NC State, and I had NC State winning. I mean, it was a pretty close game, but I feel like NC State would have definitely won. They, they've been good the whole season, and they're a pretty dominant team. So, I thought that Tennessee was going to pull off the upset here against NC State. Um, I thought Rakia Jackson was going to have, well, she did have a big game. She had 33 points and 10 boards. But I thought that she was going to help lead them to a win. But she just didn't get the supporting cast to help propel them past NC State. And NC State just has a really full roster. The final game in the Portland Four region was Iowa State versus Stanford. And Stanford won 87-81 in overtime. I had Stanford winning this game, but I actually had Mar them playing Maryland. I'm surprised Iowa State put up that big of a fight. I mean, they took it to overtime, which I think is a great accomplishment for them. I also had Iowa State versus Stanford, and I had St Stanford winning this game. It was a pretty close game, and I mean, Iowa State sent them um, the game into overtime, and I just thought it was a really good game. I thought that it was going to be Maryland playing Stanford this game, but I still chose Stanford to win because they're just too dominant. Um, I think that Iowa State put up a really good fight, and Audie Crooks had a really big role in this game, making it so close because Cameron Brink fouled out because of how much Audie Crooks was on the offensive end. We're now moving on to the Sweet 16 in the Albany Wood region. The first game was South Carolina versus Indiana and South Carolina won 79-75. I'm surprised Indiana was able to put up this big of a fight. They only lost by four, even though I was expecting at least probably like a 10 point deficit. Yeah, I, had, I originally had South Carolina playing Oklahoma, but I mean, I still picked South Carolina to win. And I feel like South Carolina should have won by a little more. I mean, they only won by four, but I mean, they still won and that's what matters. I thought that Oklahoma was going to be in this game instead of Indiana, but I think I still had South Carolina winning. I think that Indiana played really good this game. They had a lot of good um, clutch threes at the end, like Sydney Parrish, and that helped them cut the deficit down to four, but it wasn't enough. The second and final game of the Sweet 16 in the Albany One region was Oregon State versus Notre Dame, and Oregon State won 70-65. I actually had these same teams in this game, but I just thought Notre Dame was going to win. They're such a powerhouse, and I'm surprised they lost. I also had Oregon State playing Notre Dame, and I had Oregon State when pulling off the upset for this game. I mean, it was a really close game. I mean, Oregon State only won by five, which is pretty good. Pretty good game. So, um, I thought it was going to be Nebraska versus Notre Dame, but I had Notre Dame winning. Um, I really thought that this was not going to be a close game at all, but during the second, the start of the second quarter, they made Hannah Hidalgo sit out, sit out for like five minutes because of her nose ring that she's played with all season long. I don't think that this, I don't think they should have done this because if she's been getting by playing with it all season long, then why do this now? If she hadn't been out of the game for those five minutes, they probably wouldn't have lost. Yeah, that was a big controversy that game. The second set of games in the Sweet 16 is in the Albany 2 region. The first game is Iowa versus Colorado. Iowa won 89-68. Maddie, what did you think about this game? I thought this was a good game for both teams. I mean, Iowa definitely came out on top by a good margin, but doesn't mean that Colorado isn't a bad team. Even though I originally had Iowa playing Kansas State, which, I mean, it proves that Colorado is a better team and they were able to beat a 4 seed while they are a 5 seed. Yeah, I had Iowa uh, versus Colorado, and I had Iowa winning. Iowa's a really dominant team. They're really good, and, I mean, they won by a, a pretty good range. But it was a pretty good game for both of them. Um, I had Iowa versus Colorado, and Iowa winning, and this game was all Iowa from the start. The next game is LSU versus UCLA, and LSU won 78-69. Um, I, I predicted that UCLA would win because I thought that they had like the more dominant team, but I was wrong, clearly. Blaje Johnson had a really big game for LSU, and Angel Reese helped provide a lot of points for them until she fouled out at the end, I think. Yeah, I also had LSU and UCLA, but I 
how do you see LA winning this game? I mean, I was close between these two, but um, UCLA, LSU ended up winning, so. I had the correct matchup for this game, but instead of Paige and Aubrey, I had LSU winning. I, I'm not really sure why I picked them. I just felt I, what I really wanted was I really wanted the matchup of Iowa versus LSU just because that was what the final was last year. The third pair of games in the Sweet 16 is in the Portland 3 region. The first game was USC versus Baylor, and USC won 74-70. Aubrey, what did you think about this game? I mean, I originally had UC, U, USC <laughs> and Virginia Tech, but I, also, I just had USC winning anyway. I mean, it was a really good game for Baylor, though. I mean, it was, a, it was really close, but um, I'm glad USC pulled out the win. I had the same matchup as Aubrey. I had USC versus T Virginia Tech, and I had USC winning, of course. I mean, that is a closer game than I expected between for like USC. I, I just thought they were very dominant, and I didn't think Baylor would be able to almost knock them out. I had the same matchup that Maddie and Aubrey had, and I also picked South Carolina, not South Carolina, USC to win. Um, Juju Watkins played really well, and Mackenzie Forbes hit some clutch three-pointers for them in this game. The last game in the Sweet 16 in the Portland 3 region is UConn versus Duke. UConn won 53-45. to um, I had UConn playing Ohio State, but I still had UConn winning. Um, this game was a lot closer than I expected it to be because it was only, what, an eight-point game? And Duke, I mean, they did really well in the tournament, but UConn is way better than them, and I would have liked to see much more from them. Yeah, I also had UConn playing Duke originally, but I had UConn winning anyway. It was a good game. It was pretty close, which is um, which was good for Duke, but I'm glad that UConn um, won. I originally had UConn versus Ohio State. I was not expecting that Duke upset. I mean, this game, it was a good game overall, if you're thinking from just like a like not you don't not really wanting to pick to pick a team, but I just would have wished to see more points from UConn. I feel like they're a such better team, and I feel like they should have scored at least sixty or seventy points. The final pair of games in the Sweet Sixteen were in the Portland Four region. The first game was Texas versus Gonzaga, and Texas won sixty nine forty seven. I originally had Texas versus Utah in this game. I was not expecting Gonzaga to get here. I mean, this was a good game for Texas. I wish they would have scored a few more points just because they're a one seed and they're playing a five seed. I mean, well, a four seed. Yeah, I had Texas and Gonzaga playing each other, and I had Texas winning. This was a pretty good game for Texas. I mean, I think they could have scored a little more, but it was they still played a good game. I had the same matchup as Maddie between Texas and Utah, but I picked Utah to win. Um, I really thought that Utah was going to make it here, and I thought they were going to beat Texas, but, but I didn't really realize how dominant Texas was until I watched their first two games in the tournament, and that really made me regret my decision to pick Utah. The final game in the Portland Four region was NC State versus Stanford, and NC State won 77-67. I originally had NC State versus Stanford, but I had Stanford winning. I just was not expecting NC State to upset Stanford. I mean, Stanford's a phenomenal team, but I, I'm just surprised that NC State was able to do it. I had NC State uh, playing against Stanford, too, and I actually had NC State pulling off the upset. NC State's been really good this season, and I felt like they could have just definitely won, and it was a really good game for both teams. Um, well, I had Tennessee playing Stanford, uh, but I had Tan Stanford winning, which was wrong anyway. Um, I really thought that um, who was it? Tennessee was going to make it there with Rakia Jackson, and I thought that they would play good against Stanford, but that didn't happen. And I did not expect anything like this from NC State beating a two seed in Stanford with Cameron Brink and Kiki Iriafin. We're now moving on to the Elite Eight round in the Albany One region. South Carolina played Oregon State and South Carolina won 70-58. I had South Carolina in this game, but I did not have Oregon State. I had Notre Dame. I mean, Oregon State played phenomenal throughout this tournament, and I'm surprised they made it here, and to only lose by 12 to South Carolina is phenomenal. Yeah, I had, I had South Carolina, but I had South Carolina playing against Oregon State. 
But I mean, I suspected South Carolina would win because they were one seed, but it was a really good game for Oregon State as well. I had South Carolina playing Notre Dame in this game, but I still had South Carolina winning. Um, I thought that Oregon State put up a really good fight against South Carolina, and if it wasn't for Reagan Beers um, picking up some early fouls, then they might have won because she could have held Camila Cardoso to very few points, which would have helped them win. The Elite Eight matchup in the Albany Two region was between Iowa and LSU, and Iowa won 94 to 87. Um, I had Iowa playing UCLA in my bracket, but I still picked Iowa to win. I thought that Iowa was going to win before this game. I had the intention that I was, Iowa was going to win because Angel Reese had been getting into foul trouble a lot in the tournament before, and Caitlin Clark was playing really well throughout the tournament. I originally had Iowa versus UCLA. I mean, I still had Iowa winning, but this was a really close game. I mean, Elish. LSU only lost by seven, so I mean, it was a good game. I had the correct matchup for this game, and I of course picked Iowa to win the game. I didn't really see any way that LSU would beat them. I mean, I knew it was going to be a close game, and both teams scored a lot of points, so I think this is a good game for both teams. The next matchup in the Elite Eight was in the Portland Three region between USC versus UConn. UConn won 80-73, to and these are the two teams that I had playing each other, and I had the same result in my bracket. I thought that UConn played really well and Paige Beckers did as well, but USC needed a little more support from their um, role players outside of Juju Watkins and they did not get this this game, which caused them to lose. Yeah, I had USC playing UConn and I had UConn winning. This was a good game for UConn and I feel like they would have definitely pulled off the win anyway. I had USC versus UConn too and I had UConn winning. I I just had a feeling that UConn was going to be able to beat USC, even though USC is a dominant and young team. But I mean, they only won by seven, but that's still a good team, a good score for only having eight people on your team. The last matchup in the Elite Eight, elite eight round was in the Portland Four region. It was Texas versus NC State, and NC State won 76-66. I originally had. Texas and Sanford in this game, and I had Sanford winning. I was not expecting the NC State upset. They only beat Texas by 10 much. I mean, that's still a good point differential, but I feel like Texas could have played better, and they could have been in the next game. I had Texas playing NC State, but I had Texas winning. I really thought that Texas was going to pull off this win. I didn't see the win coming from NC State at all, but I mean, NC State did really good this game, but I just feel like Texas could have better. Well, um, I had Utah playing Stanford, so um, my pick was not even right because I had Stanford winning, but I think that Texas could have used a lot more um, momentum from their role players outside of Madison Booker. She's played really well in her freshman season, and she's going to be great next year, but NC State just had like a full all-around game. We're now moving on to the second to last round of the tournament, and it is the Final Four. The first game was South Carolina versus NC State, and South Carolina won 78-59. I had Stanford and South Carolina in this game. So I was not expecting NC State to be here, but I mean, I of course had South Carolina beating whoever they were going to play. They're just such a dominant team. They're undefeated, and they, I saw no way of them losing to any team they would be playing. I had South Carolina playing Texas, but anyway, I saw South Carolina winning. And South Carolina's just been too good this season. They've been, they're a really dominant team, so. I had South Carolina playing Stanford, but I still had South Carolina winning. Um, I think that this game was really good, even though it was on, what was this, 19 point difference. I think that this was still good for NC State because if you're playing South Carolina, it's kind of hard to be anywhere within 20 points. And if you're within 20 points with a dominant team like them, then that's a good day. The last game in the Final Four was Iowa versus UConn, and Iowa won 71-69. I had both of these teams in this matchup, and I, of course, had Iowa winning. I It was a good game. Nika Moore had phenomenal defense. I believe she only had uh, let Peyton Clark score six points in the first quarter, which is phenomenal. And they only lost by, what, two? So that was a good game for UConn. Paige Beckers had a good game, and I am glad that Iowa did win, though. Yeah, I had Iowa playing UConn, 
and Iowa winning. This was a really good game for both of them. But I mean, I just want I want to see Caitlin Clark play against Paige Beckers. That, so I thought that that was um, pretty cool to watch. But I'm glad that Iowa won. I had Iowa versus UConn, and I had Iowa winning. If UConn had their full roster, then I think that that would have been a different ending, but they didn't, and I think that's what helped Iowa win. Um, a lot of people are saying that the offensive foul that they called at the end were co- was controversial, but I think that it was a clear offensive foul, and it was an illegal screen, and they're saying that the refs sold the game, but they're, I was just better. Caitlin Clark turned it up in the second half. Now, I want to give a lot of credit to Nika Mule because she played really good defense. Like Maddie said, held her to six points in the first half. But, I mean, UConn was switching off of a lot of the screens, which they couldn't do because then Caitlin Clark would be on, like, someone that wasn't as good as a defender as Nika Mule, and that's what cost them the game. The final game of the tournament was a national championship between South Carolina and Iowa, and South Carolina won 87-75. to I think that Iowa started out really good. It was 10-0, um, like, with seven minutes in the first quarter. Um, but then they let South Carolina come back, and South Carolina just kept building momentum, and they were up three going into halftime because off of a Caitlin Clark turnover, which led to a wide-open layup. If that turnover might, might not have happened, I think that Iowa would have won because they would have had more momentum, but that's not how it went. Yeah, I had South Carolina playing Iowa. I had Iowa winning, but South Carolina ended up winning by, by 12, so <laughs> couldn't do it now. Anyway, um, I felt like I really wanted Iowa to win, but I mean, um, South Carolina won. I mean, South Carolina had a really good season, so it's good for them. I had the correct matchup for this game, but I had Iowa winning. I just thought Iowa would be able to pull through. They had Caitlin Clark, Kate Martin, Gabby Marshall. I just thought they would be able to find a way to score more buckets. But, I mean, South Carolina went undefeated, which is a phenomenal season for them. I also just thought Iowa would, would be able to beat them just because last year when they met in the tournament, Iowa beat them while you, uh, South Carolina was undefeated. But, I mean, it was a good game for both teams, and I'm glad that Molly Davis was able to get in a few more minutes in that game. This concludes our 2024 Women's NCAA March Madness Tournament Bracket Predictions and Recap. We will now be showing you our scores for our brackets. Thank you for listening.